I think there's no question that since AEW came into being, they've been kind of in this consistent, continual cycle of talent acquisition. And that is understandable. That is arguably the right course of action because you look at them and you're saying, okay, you've got, in terms of American wrestling companies, you've got WWE, and then there's you. So there should be, in theory, plenty of people to bring in. You should be in a situation where, especially as you're trying to build a company and improve as a company and grow as a company, that you're continuing to look to get the best available talent that you possibly can. And sometimes that means that you might bring in people and replace others. In some cases, that might just mean you're in a little bit of a situation where you're hoarding some talent. You're hoarding some wrestlers which is what it feels like with AEW now because they certainly have been active in recent months and recently especially going down the old WWE veteran and legend path, bringing in folks such as Christian, bringing in folks such as Paul White, the big show, bringing in somebody like Mark motherfucking Henry. And, you know, it's one of those things, I guess, that these guys that in some cases you might have presumed or believed to potentially have been WWE lifers become available. And you look at somebody like a Christian, you say, hey, this is somebody with some type of reputation and name. He can still go. He can work with our younger talent, help them to figure out how to be a wrestler on a national and international stage. You know, somebody like a Paul White, you bring in as a commentator. I'm sure he will wrestle at some point in time, but also as somebody that could be a bit of a locker room voice, a bit of a leader in an organization, a locker room that certainly needs it. Similar type of thing with Mark Henry, whether or not he ends up ever actually wrestling or not. Um, you know, it makes sense from AEW's standpoint to bring in some of these names, bring in some of these guys, like when they brought in Miro, what have you. Now, I think to a certain degree, it does get a little overboard to the point where they have too much on their roster. They have too many people on their roster and you want to run into a real problem of having a glut there to where you're either A, not featuring a number of people that you're paying a salary to or B, you're trying to feature too many people on your weekly Dynamite program, which I think we've seen a combination of both of those things. But it's not our money. You could argue it's not even Tony Khan's money. It's his daddy Shad's money. But hey, it is what it is. He wants to spend it. He wants to accumulate, hoard, acquire talent. More power to him. But then you start to hear about the, well, they're just signing WWE retreads and WWE has-beens and WWE rejects. And then you're watching Dynamite on Friday this week and you get the unveiling of Andrade being their new signing. And it's like, here we go again. And what I find very curious is how a lot of fans like will question this or knock this or criticize this. Like, it's really any of our business who they decide to pay. Like, it's a bad thing that Andrade gets a freaking contract. He gets a chance to apply his trade, his craft. He gets a chance to make a living, you know, for a company that should certainly be trying to appeal more to your Latin Hispanic demographics, um, bringing a guy like Andrade in certainly should help to do that at least a little bit. Like, who are we to sit there and say, well, they shouldn't bring this guy in or this guy's a mistake or, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of his, but as far as I know, he's not anything like a scuzz bucket or anything. I mean, he's not like an Alberto Del Rio or anything like that. Um, you know, I might disagree with his choice of future husbands. You heard me right. I said it, future husbands. But, you know, more power to him. I think he's a solid hand, you know, and would hate to see a guy like him not getting some type of salary in wrestling just because WWE didn't utilize him, just because WWE gave up on him, just because WWE most of the time, from a creative standpoint, doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, not a reason for me to hate on Andrade, but what I really want to talk about here is this notion of WWE retread, WWE reject, WWE has been, and all of that stuff. And I've certainly been guilty of this too from time to time, especially back in the day when we were talking about the old TNA. 
you know, talking about all the stars of WCW days gone by and WWF slash E days gone by. And what I don't understand is our preoccupation with this as a wrestling fan base as a whole. It's, it's incredibly stupid to me. Like, because if you really look throughout wrestling history, just about everybody, especially when you go back to the territorial days, they got done here, so they went there. Once they got done there, they came back over here, and then they went over there, and da-da-da-da-da. Like, everybody, you could argue, was a reject of one territory or a retread of one territory or another at some point in damn time. And even as you got into the 80s and so forth, you could look at Hulk Hogan and say he was a WWF retread that went to AEW, got in Rocky III, became a big deal in the Minneapolis area in, in that AWA territory, and then Vince signed him, so he signed an AEW guy, or AWA guy, excuse me, AEW, AWA guy. Macho Man and Piper and all these other guys that came in. You know, they had worked all these other territories and all these other places, but we don't sit there and refer to them as, oh, they were just this or they were just that. They were this reject or they were this retread or anything like that. Like, who the fuck would? Makes no goddamn sense. Like, you're going to tell me that you, being in a position of power, wouldn't sign somebody like Ted DiBiase from Mid-South or the Macho Man Randy Savage because they worked at another territory and they'd be a retread or a reject. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. You know what I mean? And then when you look at the 90s and you look at the Monday Night Wars, you know, the NWO, headlined by Hogan, Hall, and Nash. If we want to go there, they technically were all WWF retreads, WWF rejects. They were all in the fold there at one point in time and came down south to get into Ted Turner's pocketbook. Same thing when you brought the Macho Man down. And on the flip side, you could sit there and say, well, Cactus Jack... Mick Foley, Mankind, was an ECW, WCW fucking reject. Steve Austin was a freaking reject and unwanted at WCW. Same thing with Paul White, the giant, became the big show when he went up to WWF. Chris Jericho. You know, I could go on and on. You had these guys made these jumps and they went different places. And we didn't used to sit here and talk about retreads or rejects. You looked at it more from a standpoint of they acquired talent. They've got a chance to do something different with them, potentially even something better with them. But in recent years especially, it seems like we've gotten to this mind space and this mindset of if they worked at WWE at one point in time, they're a fucking retread or a reject. We don't sit there and say... AJ Styles is a TNA retread. We don't sit, didn't sit there and say Samoa Joe was a TNA retread. They just signed with WWE. But when somebody signs away from WWE, goes elsewhere, all of a sudden they're a freaking retread, a retreck, a uh, retread, a reject, a has been, a washed up. And I don't fucking get it. Now, to me, when I look back at the TNA days, it was a little different. The context and perspective are important here. It was the fact that instead of bringing in these legends to bring eyeballs onto your product and then building up that next generation of talent, which is what they should have been doing for years, they just pounded and pounded and pounded all the names of the past from WCW and WWF because they were desperately trying to chase that ratings point on Spike TV every week. Short term might have worked okay. Long term, we see what happened. It wasn't the fact that they were bringing everybody in. It was the fact that they were bringing everybody in and then only spotlighting them, only pounding them over, only putting them over, only strongly and prominently featuring them. That was the problem. When I look at somebody like an Andrade from WWE going to freaking AEW, this is not a retread or a reject. It's just a dude that time was up as one company and he went to a fucking other. And I don't, just don't get and understand why we take this kind of perspective. I really don't. And it's a very, like, WWE superiority snob type of complex. And we really should get over it. Now, look, you might look at the viability of saying, well, just how good of a talent is he really? Like, just how much does he really bring to the table? Did you really need to sign another guy like this? Don't you have a bunch of these guys already? Like, these are valid questions. Now, you could also point to it and say, you know what, for Tony Khan... 
he's sitting there and he's in a place where when these guys are coming available, they're trying to acquire talent. You want to hoard talent so that way they don't go to WWE or they don't go to New Japan or they don't go to AAA or something like that. I get it and I understand it. And if you've got the resources to be able to do that and play a little bit of the waiting game and play the bigger picture and hoard some of that talent, then you certainly should. I think there's a viability and feasibility of just how much money you want to spend on a roster featuring a bunch of people that aren't consistently getting work on your main program. That's a fair question. But signing a guy like Andrade should not be us sitting there and saying they signed a retread, retread or a reject. Because if we use that logic, Stone Cold Steve Austin was nothing more than stunning Steve reject ass from WCW and even for a couple of months ECW. I don't know where this came about being, and maybe it was really in the TNA time, because this really became a thing. Oh, Dixie's just bringing in another reject and retread washed up has been from WCW or WWE. I get it. The big difference to me was how they featured and presented them and what that meant to the other talent, the rest of the roster and to the brand as a whole for the long term. Like they would literally retread storylines and rip off storylines and rehash old shit. Like, yeah, it was bad. But here, like you're telling me if you're in a position, you're running the company, a guy like Andrade comes available, especially if the price is right, that you wouldn't explore the option of bringing him in? You're not going to bring in somebody like a Mark Henry, a Paul White, a Christian? Really? And it's not like they're featuring these guys and pounding them over everybody's fucking head at the expense of everybody else. You leave that to the EVPs to do. You got the world champions in EVP. You got the tag champs in EVP. And don't even get me started on fucking Cody. He's like, your, your push, your momentum is going to go, go away. <laughs> but like I said, I, I just don't get why we talk so much about these people being retreads or rejects. Like that's been the nature of the beast of the business forever. How many people actually stay with their companies for an extended, extended period of time? The reality is not that many. You know, they have a shelf life, they run their course, and then they go somewhere else. That's just reality. When you work at your current employer now, should everybody just view you as somebody else's reject or retread or washed up has been from another place? That doesn't make any fucking sense. And we should really stop talking about it in the wrestling sense too, especially when AEW is not featuring these people that are coming from WWE like a Dixie Carter used to.